I'm just, uh, hey, it's Hothead, and I'm just uh, with a, a friend who's unhoused uh, in the McGuangan Territory on Vancouver Island, and uh, they just want to express an opinion, or, or they just want to express what they witnessed when they went to Edmonton during the COVID last year. You just want to say what, what you experienced there, what it was like. You said it was like a war zone. Yeah, it was, uh, there were, there were gang, gang scenarios, gang, gang scenarios played out, like, right in the open right down you know where the shelter shelters were so it was in everybody's faces and people were worn down they were so tired i remember this it'd be sunny out hot people would be sitting cross-legged on the sidewalk on the line just trying to be and there'd be uh i remember this this one guy got beat up and he's getting kicked on the ground like getting kicked in the head no one was doing anything everyone was so destroyed like yeah. mentally physically it was nuts uh, I've heard about stuff like that happening yeah yeah uh, one time in Vancouver down to any side someone walked by and just uh, kicked someone and started to yeah. yeah when you have when you have say 15 20 witnesses and no one does a thing you kind of wonder what this is Canada you know like Canadian society is it because of fear you think that people oh totally Fear, war, everyone, all the homeless there, yeah. And that's when they were also locked up, like here? Yeah. 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 And so how is it different that you saw? Because you saw it here during the time after the lockdown. And you saw the police abandon everybody in the first welfare. And it was three or four days before the welfare check at the end of that month, back in January, February there, 2020. And, uh, like, right away, everybody was like, you know, everybody was freaked out. The borders were closed. A lot of people didn't know what was going on. Fights happened. Myself and others went around asking people, can you walk yeah. Asking people to uh, not uh, kill each other. You know, like, don't, with all your, your conflicts, don't kill each other. Right. Um, so that's what was happening. And, and do you think it was the same kind of energy happening there? Like, people were trying to take power, extorting, working out conflicts in a bad way? It's hard. That's a really hard question. Okay, yeah. To, to answer, but um, I think it was this. It was like uh, what happened on Pandora was like a was like a two stars meeting, you know, an ex- an explosion of energy, mm-hmm. and uh, true, it had ripple effects everywhere. Yeah, I think it really did. Like Victoria's, uh, you know, I think it's a, a hot spot for like uh, information exchange. True, and uh, yeah. also uh, intercultural kind of. Uh, coming togetherness yeah so that's what i feel like so um well said yeah um thanks Uh, and i I just want to say i really really appreciate it how you took care of your brother all that was going down they needed help you stuck with them and i often look for you after that wondering how you were around your debrief because you were there every day for them you stood by them they were in a breakdown it was, it, was, it, was, it was awesome. Well, it was easy for me because I was kind of fresh from the outside. And when I arrived in Pandora, it was, it was insane as well. Yeah. Um, Edmonton being the only other craziest place. And coming from Toronto, where there's, I guess, on paper, like notorious uh, gangs and crimes and stuff. Yeah. I, didn't, I haven't seen any sort of violence as much as I have had here or in Edmonton. So I was fresh and I saw everything. I was desensitized I guess quickly and then it was going back and forth I was just like trying to it was real survival for me mentally I bet and you said after the Pandora police attack you you had to go after that you needed a break <laughs> yeah after yeah. the uh, yeah. yeah yeah it was just so much uh, heartbreak and you know there's this you know I think we get reminded we got reminded of what direction we needed to go from there I think everyone kind of dispersed from that intensity like with a new plan you know a mission or uh, mm. something to set in stone for themselves because we really held out for quite a while it was and, uh, unheard of and it allows unprecedented the, it's allowed the, this to happen like these three tents here they, you know we were supposed to get kicked out of this park for example two weeks ago yeah so it's paved the way for more freedoms, more leniency in terms of uh, enjoying life. 
like, like we are. So people yeah. holding the ground, taking space, like that day 11 people took arrests. It wasn't the end. People went back. They just stayed. <coughs> So you're, you're saying that, I hear you saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, but because of that, the president, the people taking that space, holding it, trying to make the best out of it, that then people left from there and did more, that they learned something together. Yeah, I, I, I call them patriotic, like street patriots. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know, they're, whether they know it or not. Yeah, right. You know, they help lead the way to say no, I'm yeah. not going to move. That so we're, we're enjoying kind of riding the coattails of that. And that's a good point because I was taught from elders, uh, radical feminists and in industrial workers of the world type people who know about the, the old, old, old unions of the late 1800s that tried to, you know, bring justice to, to working people. Yeah. I lost my train of thought. Well, but, oh, right, that we're standing on their shoulders. Like oh, yeah. The eight-hour day, yeah. that was because people fought with blood. Uh, postal workers in Vancouver in the 70s fought and there was blood on the streets, I heard them. Um, so, I mean, people have fought for rights, and the, the, here... Their trucks are bread or something. <laughs> well, it's, it's also... the letter through, no matter what. Well, I want to stick with... I don't want to go off topic too much, because what you said to it me... might have been rings of something in terms of, like, the people the... themselves did that, the unhoused themselves, in a very desperate situation, and it seems like you said to be rippling into a, yeah. a pushback, and I'm bringing up pushback because there's this United Nations... Uh, Human Rights Repertoire, who used to be the rap in the UN for housing. <laughs> um, they're living in Ottawa. They're this little five foot two person who is saying that we have rights as people who are uh, unhoused. I used to be unhoused. I haven't for a long time, but th that you as an unhoused have rights and that we have the right of free speech, the right of free association. And a lot of these rights are being squashed and people are pushing back. It's yeah. basically what's happening. Yeah. It's like rewriting uh, you know, treaties and stuff. Like, uh, but I wanted, I wanted to touch on the point where, uh, you know, the, the kind of where the money's coming from. You know, like when I was in Edmonton, for example, it was a huge, huge oil town. Yes. You know, Edmonton. I lived in Alberta twenty years, Calgary. I don't want to, I don't want to beat this one to death, but uh, <laughs> you know, I really uh, got reminded after leaving the tent city of what's happened, like the juggernaut and like where the energy's come from, right? And I was really, I was just, again, thrown for another loop. You know, I left here to recover, I went to them, just the wrong boat. Oh, yeah, so then you had to deal with that. Yeah, so I went to Calgary after, you know, a couple of encounters, a fist fight, uh, you know, I guess the usual street stuff. And then I <coughs> went with saw my brother and kind of recouped. Yeah. And then I came back. So yeah, that was kind of a... Wow. Well, you seem better. You seem grounded. You seem like it helped on some level. Yeah. I think it... Well, it definitely has. Yeah. And it was a lot of work. Kind of... Uh, you know, nothing you're going to get paid, you know, uh, uh, cash for. But... <laughs> You know, no. you know it is. But it's community free. building, that's what's awesome. Like, even us connecting, we never would have if COVID wouldn't have happened. Yeah. You know? That's true. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this. I appreciate yeah, it. I'm going to stop it. I forgot. Right.